Hi, happy September. It is the 15th of the month and that means there's time for a new pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. So when I say today, it is September 15th, 2021. And this cute goat is the newest pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club at Shiny Happy World. So you can get the pattern if you're in the club. The pattern is already available to you in the clubhouse. It's just there waiting for you to download. And if you're not in the club yet and you join, this is the pattern that you're gonna get immediately. If you're watching this video after October 15th, 2021, the pattern is no longer available in the club, but starting early in November, it'll be available just in the regular shop at Shiny Happy World. So here's how to make this goat. Okay, here are our goat pieces all cut out and prepared. I've already traced the placement lines on here, so now I'm just spreading everything out. So I always start with the bottom piece, the piece that whatever touches the edge of the block. Remember, I'm almost always on my designs trying to frame it as though it's a picture and um, we've got the, we're cutting the, the goat's neck off, but that's just because it's the bottom of the frame. We don't wanna put it up here floating and then you've just got this chopped off neck. So think of it like a photograph. So you want the bottom edge of the piece to line up with the raw edge of your block so that it will get embedded in your seam allowance. So I start with that. And this one, um, he's just facing forward, very symmetrical. I'm gonna center him in the block. I think that's what's gonna look best with this guy. So then I'm gonna put his face in. And I've got a marking on the neck showing how much you need to overlap it. Once you cover up that line, you know you've got it overlapped enough that it'll be secure when you do the um, your stitching, it's not gonna come loose. All right, now I'm gonna put some of the ears in. So each ear has got two pieces. It's got, oh, and I've got these the wrong sides. So it's got a top ear, an upper ear, and it's got a lower ear that's gonna give it some shading. So it's gonna give it, goats have that kind of folded over ear. So I'm gonna start actually with the lower ear and peel that off. And then it's a little difficult to see the markings. I marked it with a pencil to make it more clear than just with the chalk, but there's a mark on the side of the head. Here, you can see it on this. There's a mark on the side of the head that shows where the ears go. So I'm gonna line this bottom ear up at the bottom edge of that marking, and I'm going to tuck it under until the line on the ear is covered up. I may need to shift that up or down once I get the upper ear in. I'm gonna put the upper ear in, tuck that under the head. I'm lining that up with the top edge of this marking here. And then you can see that it covers up. There's a line on the lower ear that I wanna make sure I get covered up. And basically you want this to come to a nice little rounded point. So, tucked that all under, and there we go. So that is all lined up. So on this side, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. There's no right or wrong way to do this, so I'm gonna just show you a different way to uh, position these pieces, and um, you can even fuse this ahead of time, especially if you have one of those silicone mats. You could fuse the two ear pieces together and then peel them off the mat and then tuck them under here as one unit. But I'm gonna show you how you can do it since it's just two pieces and they're relatively simple. So there's a marking on the lower ear that shows how much has to be overlapped by the upper ear. So I can do that and then I can just pick it up and kind of hold it as both pieces and tuck it under here as one. So there's uh, never a right way or a wrong way. There's never one single right way or wrong way, I should say, to do this. Just do whatever works for you. The horns are easier because they're just a single piece. So there is a mark, again, at the top of the head. There are two marks for where the horns go, and I can see them on here. Hopefully you can too, but they're just marked lightly with pencil. So as soon as I cover up the marking that's on the horn, I know I've got that deep enough. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. 
So this marking is showing me where the horn goes and the marking on the horn is showing me how much it needs to overlap. So that's good. And then I'm just gonna do the eyes. They are very easy. Got two of those and one very large, adorable goat nose. All right, I'm gonna take it over to my ironing board. I'm gonna fuse it down and then do all of the outline stitching and then I'll bring it back and show you the finished block. And here he is, all finished and outlined. I love how this guy turned out. And I wanna show you a few more colors. I always do them in a few different colors. Um, and in this time, I really, I'm, I'm just tickled. I am thrilled with how every single one of them turned out. So just to give you, cause people always ask, and sometimes I forget to say, on this one, the background block is from the Rainbow Sherbert fabric bundle and all of the fabrics on the goat are from the Warm Neutrals fabric bundle. Here's the next one. So this little guy, the background fabric is from the Muted Rainbow fabric bundle and the greens, the these two greens are from the Green Batiks, or I'm sorry, sorry, from the Batik Rainbow fabric bundle. And this just slightly dark, darker green, I pulled out of the Greens fabric bundle, the Green Batiks. Um, I just wanted to point out one thing. You're going to see this in all of the blocks, but every once in a while I remember to talk about color placement. And um, I, even when I'm making a completely fantasy colored animal, I do try and keep the relative lights and darks comparable to what they are like in real life. And it helps a fantasy colored animal still look real. And so on this guy, goat horns are almost always darker than their fur. And so on all of these, you can see it on these two and you'll see it on the others that I'm gonna show you. The horns are a little bit darker. The ears and the face are both a lighter color. And then the underside of the ears, cause I wanted to show his floppy ears, and his neck are both a darker color. Even if a goat is all over the same color, like say maybe it's over, all over a, green, a cream color, um, the underside of the ears and the throat is gonna look darker because that's where shadows fall because they have a three-dimensional face and the ears are flopped over. So these areas are gonna be shaded so they're gonna look darker even though they are the same color. And you can see I did that on the realistic colored one too. So he's got a slightly darker shade of brown um, underneath the ears and under his neck. And you'll see that on the other ones too that I'm going to show you. So this one, I, I love this. Two of my favorite fabric bundles to put together are the Gingham Play fabric bundle and the Dots fabric bundle. And on this one, I wanted a third version of orange and so I pulled the orange out of the little stripes bundle. So those are all from three different bundles, but they're all designed to work really well together. And then the background block is from the Batik Rainbow Fabric Bundle, the same fabric bundle that I had the greens from on this version. And I've got one more to show you. I could not, sometimes I stop at three, but this time I couldn't stop at three. And this one is a black and white. And I think this might be the first time I've done black and whites for an animal that wasn't actually black and white like a penguin. Um, I've got these black and white bundles. You'll get a mix of different fabrics. So if you ordered the black and whites bundle, you're not necessarily gonna get these fabrics, but you are gonna get a mix of some fabrics that are predominantly white and some fabrics that are predominantly black and some fabrics that are a more even mix between them. So you'll get a whole range of dark to light. And so on this one, even though they're all black and white, I still did a little bit darker here because these black spots are a little bit bigger and a little bit darker under the ears. So I had the same kind of light to medium dark color combinations happening that helps it look like a realistic animal. So on this one, the background block is from the solid rainbow bundle. So I'm going to be doing more in the next in the coming months if you're in the funny faces club you're going to see more sample blocks that i'm doing with some of these black and whites i've done a lot of blocks where i show them in the background but i think this is going to be the first set of them that i show with them being used for the animals and these are great for a nursery quilt if you're looking for something 
um, for a very, very young baby and you wanna play with that black and white high contrast, this is a really fun way to do it and then just use a bright color for the background. So that's it for the goat pattern this month. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World and I'll see you next month.